Hey guys, AJ Hazzy here and welcome back to the Vantage Report. It has been eight weeks since our last report and boy have things changed. Eight weeks ago, I reported to you that we were running at about half speed, half the amount of sales, half the amount of listings, and predicting that there would be some pent up demand coming back through the month of June. Well, that prediction turned out to be correct. Since the end of lockdown in late May, the market has been getting progressively hotter and hotter. So let's take a look at the stats since the last report from May 15th. Sales over the past eight weeks are almost back up to 2019 levels. As you can see, only about 5% back of this time last year. However, if you ignore the last two weeks of May when things hadn't fully reopened yet and just look at the most recent six weeks, sales are actually up 13%. This still leaves us about 10% down year over year, but this gap is quickly closing as July is shaping up to be another big month in real estate. One big change, which I hadn't predicted, is a surge in the luxury market, with sales over a million dollars up 50% year over year. New listings have jumped to nearly normal levels and are a little over 5% lower than this time last year. Our overall inventory is actually down by close to 500 units, which explains why we have seen the absorption rate continue to improve. If you recall, we had nearly 13 months of inventory back in April, a serious buyer's market. Now things have improved in May and I made a prediction of a return to a balanced market of six months of inventory or less for June. This did come to pass and July stats suggest that we're going to get down to around four months of inventory, which is now a seller's market and something we haven't seen in a few years here. Now days on market is still a little longer than this time last year, but this is one of the lag indicators or the last ones to change. So I expect this number to shrink by the next time I report to you. Now on to discounting. What are people actually paying for homes? You may recall in April that things had softened and people were getting an average of 5% off. Well, things have tightened back up since then and homes are selling at precisely what they did in 2019, which is 97%. So what's going on with prices? While the average transaction has gone from around 550 to close to 600,000, representing a sizable jump of nearly 8%. Now, I believe this is due to a spike in luxury sales that I mentioned before. The skewing the average, it's not the average house has gone up by 8%. But if inventory levels stay at four months or less for the rest of summer, we will see some upward pressure on pricing. So let's take a look at why all this is happening. Amidst a global pandemic and all the economic uncertainty, we've got CMHC and RBC releasing reports calling for a Canadian housing collapse. And yet here we are having a real estate boom amidst all of this. Well, here are three reasons that I can come up with for why this market seems to be defying logic. Number one, the mass exodus from major centers due to the pandemic. People are rethinking living in a concrete jungle or a shoebox in the sky after being quarantined for months and sharing elevators with strangers. We've seen a solid spike in agricultural purchases as well as people trend towards self-sustainability and want some elbow room. Number two, we call this workers untethered, with many companies learning that their employees can be just as productive if not more productive working from home, living close to the office is suddenly of lesser importance. So if you are part of the growing cohort of people who can work from home, then where do you ultimately want home to be? Kelowna makes a pretty good choice. Number three, government or the Trudeau bucks that are being thrown around. We've got the CERB, we've got wage subsidies, we've got all kinds of uh, stimulus being injected into the economy. And obviously this has loosened up some spending. It's definitely shoring things up uh, for the time being. I don't believe people are buying houses because of government subsidy or because of any windfall coming from the government. In fact, taking the CERB actually disqualifies you from getting a mortgage. So this isn't what's causing the housing boom, but it is propping up the economy. And we currently don't have a full understanding of just how bad our job market or our local economy is hit by COVID-19 because it is kind of being uh, supported or stimulated by this government money, these injections of capital, the $40,000 loans the business owners got, as I say, the 75% wage subsidy, $2,000 a month that is going to most of the um, frontline workers who would otherwise not be able to pay rent. There's definitely going to be uh, some challenges that come when this stops. So all I would say is that what we're experiencing right now is built on some strong fundamentals, but there's also some other converging factors. Um, some of them are trends that will carry on for a while, first two, and number three, this is uh, really the next thing on the horizon that could potentially change the, uh, the trajectory of the market. So we'll keep a close eye on it. You can count on Vantage to be your eyes and ears in the market. And until then, uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd love to chat with you about your real estate goals. And uh, until next time, bye for now.